you were not aware of Epstein activities. Did you know who he was? Yes, I knew him. I was introduced to him on my 31st birthday by my ex-boyfriend Flavio. He was always front and center at Victoria's Secret shows. Did you suspect what he was doing? No. And what he's done is indefensible. And when I heard of what he'd done, it sickened me to my stomach just like everybody else. Because I've had my fair share of sexual predators. And thank God that I had good people around me that protected me from this. I mean, right now I stand with the victims. It's, I can't, you know, they're scarred for life. For life. Thank you for sitting down with me, Naomi, and let me talk to you today. But I'm not happy about the subject. I've known you for some time, so I know it's important to hear your point of view on the mail on Sunday. How do you feel? I was shocked by this article in Mail on Sunday. I've always said that I'm not a saint, that I am a work in progress, but I will not be held hostage by my past. Passion for Relief is something that came to my mind in 2005. We started with Hurricane Katrina. We've helped the floods in Japan. We've worked with the Great Association Save the Children. We worked with Sarah Brown, the former Prime Minister's wife, Gordon Brown's wife, um, White Women Alliance, Maternal Health, Ebola Crisis, the floods in UK. I mean, it goes on. I'm not going to stop. And I won't be undermined or have my team be undermined for all the wonderful and great work and for all the people that have collaborated and supported the cause that Fashion for Relief chooses each year. Why would anyone be surprised to hear that you're being honored as a humanitarian? I mean, it was again very disappointing to hear and to see the way they wrote about that. To focus on the negative and say this is a vanity charity, there's no vanity about it. Do you think it's fair to draw you into the Charles Taylor story when you were only a witness? After all, the picture they used clearly shows someone cropped from it. Presume that was President Mandela? Yes, I do think it's unfair. For me, it's a distorted piece of journalism, and I do love great journalism. But this is a direct character assassination, and it belongs in like an Orwell book. If a story like this doesn't take into account the person being interviewed, does it then become fake news? Well, it's pretty one-sided. And I, you know, I don't want to get into that phrase, but I feel if you don't give the person the chance to speak for themselves and respond, I mean, this is a pretty established newspaper. You, you, you should give the person the right to respond to what your allegations are. The paper does manage to make it clear that you are not aware of Epstein activities. Did you know who he was? Yes, I knew him. I was introduced to him on my 31st birthday by my ex-boyfriend, Flavio. He was always front and center at Victoria's Secret shows. Did you suspect what he was doing? No. And what he's done is indefensible. And when I heard of what he'd done, it sickened me to my stomach just like everybody else. Because I've had my fair share of sexual predators, and thank God that I had good people around me that protected me from this. I mean, right now I stand with the victims. It's, I can't, you know, they're scarred for life. For life. How many people do you think you have rubbed shoulders with, as the Mail on Sunday put it? I've rubbed shoulders with um, hundreds of, or hundreds of thousands of people. I mean, I find it extraordinary that of all the hundreds of thousands of people that I've stood next to to take a picture at a public event, they've only chosen these few. It's going to be very difficult to be photographed at public events because you're going to think if you do take a picture, it's going to be taken out of context and used in a negative way. So it's going to be sad for everybody. Has this article made you think differently about the state of journalism today? And did you think this one-sided way of reporting could then be considered sinister? Yes, I do. Um, I mean, as I've said, I've met some great journalists and writers and done some great interviews over the years. If anyone who saw me do Newsnight with Emily, I mean, they were tough questions. And I don't mind being asked tough and strong questions. What Emily did was stand-up journalism. That's an example for me as a stand-up journalist. Straightforward, tough questions, and I was happy to answer them. 
I cannot put this in the same boat and say this is journalism, especially as I was not given the chance to respond. It's not what I would have expected. What would your conclusion be about this article? Let's call it for what it is. This is a character assassination. And we can all read between the lines and know why they keep coming at me. But I will not lay down and let that happen. The frightening conclusion here is that if the negative action of your neighbor, colleague, or even an associate can somehow make you guilty too, simply by association, then we indeed live in very worrying times. This affects us all. It is wrong, it's unfair, and it must be stopped.